Have you ever sat down and think about chemistry? Failing is not your portion. Let's make it possible. Okay. So this question here, it is, um, it is about compounds that contain phosphorus. Yeah. So in this representation, we are going to look at chemistry or science paper two, if you like. Yeah. So this question is coming from bonding. Yeah. So we have question A. Question A is saying, the formula for phosphide ion. So when, a, when an element becomes ion, which means it has gained or lose what? Electrons. It has gained or lose what? Electrons. It depends. If it, if it is an animator, it is going to become what? An ion. Okay? If it is a metal, it is going to become what? Cation. So, the formula for phosphide ion can be written as with a symbol P, the proton number of 15, the mass number or the nucleon number, which is what? Fet 1. Now, this negative 3 here on top here, it is symbolizing that this element has gained three electrons. Okay, before I go any further, let me try to explain a little bit on this part here. Whenever you see a negative on top of an element, the symbol of an element, let's say for example, if you see like, um, or then on top you can have two negative, which means that one is a what? Inanimator. Whenever you see a negative, that one is going to tell you that this element is an animator. And what usually happens here is that metals, they lose. The non-metals, they gain electrons from nani. Let me say, non-metals, they gain electrons from metals. Now, on this part here, when you talk of bonding, when you talk of bonding, only electrons are going to participate in the bonding. Only electrons are going to participate in the bonding. The number of protons, they are going to remain the, what, the same. Okay, so in this case here, this negative 3 here, it is symbolizing that for this phosphide to become, to become stable, it needs to gain three electrons from a metal. Okay, so now once it gains three electrons here, which means the number of electrons here, they are going to increase instead of having what? 15. Okay. So, let me try to light first uh, the electron configuration of uh, this phosphorus. It is having what? 15 as the electron number. So, we are going to have um, 2,8, comma what? 5. Which means it is having 5 electrons in the outermost shell. Now, for it to become stable, it needs to... Um, gain three electrons for it to become what? Stable. So now since this one here, let's take for instance that since here we are talking about, this one is a phosphide ion. For it to become a phosphide ion, for it to become an ion, which means it has gained three electrons. Initially it was what? 15. Now since it has gained three electrons, which means the number of electrons they are going to become what? 18. Altogether, 18. Then I was saying, the proton number does not change because during bonding, the only thing that involves in the bonding are electrons. Okay? So, the question is saying, copy, let me say, complete table 4.1 to show the number of particles in this phosphide ion. So, for a, an element to become an ion, which means it has gained electrons or it has lost what? Electrons. Okay, so we have particles, we have the electron, neutron, and proton, which is the last part. Then the number of particles. So this one here, it is a phosphide ion, which means it has gained three electrons for it to be called as phosphide ion. Okay, so the number of electrons here, they are going to be 18. So just like 18, okay, like this. Then the number of neutron, the number of neutron here. For us to find the number of neutron here, I'm going to say A is equal to Z plus C, capital letter N, which is, the, which is going to denote what? Neutron. So now, how it is here is that this A here, it is going to represent the mass number of phosphate ion, which is what? 31. Then Z is going to represent the proton number 
the proton number when the compound was initially called phosphorus. So it means here I'm going to get 15, don't 18. Because if you get 18, that one is going to become now an ion. Neutron also do not participate in bonding. Okay, so I'm going to say 31 for A, the mass number or the nucleon number. Then ZE, the proton number or the electron number of phosphorus or phosphate ion. Then E, plus the neutrons we don't have. So here we can collect the right terms. This 15 is going to cross an equal sign and it will change to minus. Then here I'm going to remain with what? N, which is the neutron. So 31 minus C, 15, I'm going to have what? 16. So the neutron here is going to be what? 16. Then the proton number, I'll say, the number of protons does not change. The number of protons does not change, which means here we are going to have what? 15. The only thing which is going to change here are the number of electrons because electrons, they participate in bonding, don't they? Protons, okay? Then as for B, B is saying, state why the formula for phosphide ion, it is P to the power 3 negative. Mind you, this, three power, this P to the power 3 negative, it is symbolizing that this phosphorus E or this phosphorus E for it to become a phosphorus, for it to become a phosphide ion and stable, it need to it needs to gain what three electrons only. Now, the question is saying, state why the formula for a phosphide ion is C P to the power three negative, rather than P to the power two negative or P to the power four negative. Now, as you can see here, if you see P to the power two negative, which means if we add 15 plus two, which means the number of electrons are going to become what, 17. If you draw, if you if you write the electron configuration here, we are going to have what, 2, 8, 7, which means this seven here, this one is not going to become stable. For an element to become stable, the electrons in the outermost shell should be eight. Are we together? Should be eight or two, sometimes two or eight. Okay. Then, or P to the power four negative. If you take four E, you're going to find that the electrons that are going to found in the outermost shell, they are going to be what? Only one electron. So this is because, this is because the electrons in the outermost shell are eight. Or this is because the outermost shell is having eight electrons, which means this one is stable. Or the outermost electrons are stable, which means there are eight in the outermost shell. The electrons are eight in the outermost what? shell. Then as for question C, question C is saying, the formula for calcium ion is Ca to the power two plus, which means this one here is what? A metal. Whenever you see a positive charge, that one is going to tell you that this one is what? A metal. Then I was saying, metal, metal loses electrons. Nanometals, they gain electrons. So which means this calcium, this calcium, for it to become stable or for it to become a calcium ion, it needs to lose what? Two electrons. Okay. This two E is also going to tell us the valence of this calcium. So the question is saying, deduce the formula for calcium phosphate. We know that calcium E is what? C, C A. Then the valence E is what? Two, the same one which is positive, right? Then as for the phosphide, the phosphide, for it to become stable, it needs what to gain three electrons. So that three on top there, it is going to become the valence of phosphide. But on part of the valence, you need to ignore the charges. On part of the valences, you need to ignore the what? The charges. So now what is going to happen here is that since the calcium, calcium ion is having the valence of two, 
and phosphite ion is having the valence of what? T3. So these valences, they are going to interchange. The valence of who? Uh, the valence of uh, phosphorus is going to be where? On the valence of what? Or it is going to take the position of what? Of the valence of Kasha. Or in simpler way, the valences, they are going to interchange like this. So it is going to be like Kasha 3, which is Ca3, then P, then you write what? 2, like this. Okay, then followed by the next one, which is D, T saying, calcium phosphate, calcium phosphate is an ion compound. Calcium phosphate, mind you, this phosphate E, it is a non-metal. Then calcium is a what? A metal. Now the bonding which exists between a non-metal and a metal, it's a what? Ionic bonding. Ionic what? Bonding. And ionic bonding or compounds that obey, that have ionic bonding, they have what? High melting point because of the attraction bet between a negative charge from um, nanometers and a positive charge from a metal. So now the question is saying, explain why calcium phosphate has a high melting point. The first one I'm going to say because it is a giant molecule. Apart from that one, so let me repeat, I'm saying, because it is a giant molecule. Apart from being a giant molecule, the strong attraction between opposite charges, what I mean on this part here, calcium is a metal, it is going to have a positive charge. Phosphate is a non-metal, it is going to have what? A negative charge, which means there, there will be attraction, there will be attraction. Unlike repose, they do what? They attract. Wow. And like repose, they do what? They repel. Now, these and they, they have what? Unlike repose, which means there will be the strong attraction between a metal and a non metal. Okay. So the first one I was saying, because it is a giant molecule. Then the next one I was saying, strong attraction between a positive charge and a negative what? Charge. What I mean on this part here, Calcium is positively charged, or it is a metal, which means it is going to have a positive charge. Then phosphate is a non-metal, which, which means it is going to have what? A negative charge. Then the last one, which is question E. Question E is saying, calculate the percentage by mass of phosphorus. Calculate the percentage by mass of phosphorus in calcium phosphate. Give, them, give your answer to two decimal. Uh, figures. Okay. So now on this part here, for us to calculate the, 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 the percentage by mass of phosphorus, in this compound here, phosphorus is what? Let me say calcium phosphate, it is the um, CA3 open bracket, PO4 close bracket, then 2. Now on this part here, for you to calculate the percentage by mass of phosphorus, which is P, the formula is like this. Percentage by mass, percentage by mass is equal to the molar mass, the molar mass of the compound that you are finding the percentage. In this case, here it's what? Phosphorus. Then divided by the molar mass or the mixture of the whole compound, which is calcium phosphate. Okay, so now let's try to find now the what? The, 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 the mister of the compound, which is calcium what? Phosphate. So in this case here, I'm going to start with what? Calcium. So here we are having three elements or three atoms of what? Of calcium. So I'm going to say three multiplied by the mass number. So the mass number of calcium is what? 40. Then plus. Now, these two E, these two E outside the brackets. It is going to multiply with everything inside the what? The brackets. At the result here, we are going to have two moles, two moles of um, phosphorus multiplied by the mass number of phosphorus, which is what? 31 plus. Then two multiplied by four, we are going to get what? Eight. Eight multiplied by the mass number of oxygen, which is what? 16. So our mister, of the compound, which is calcium phosphate, it is going to be what? 310. 3 what? 
310. Now saying percentage by mass is equal to the mister of the compound that you are looking for, the percentage. Over the mister of the O compound multiplied by 100%. So in this case E, let's also find the mister of uh, phosphorus. So the mister of phosphorus E, we are going to say we have two atoms of phosphorus there, or two moles of phosphorus, multiplied by the mass number which is 31, we are going to get what? 62. So here I'm going to say percentage by mass of phosphorus is equal to 62, which is the molar mass or the mister of phosphorus over the mister of the total compound, of, of the O compound, which is calcium phosphate. So in this case here it is what? 310 multiplied by 100 percent. So if I do the computation here, I'm going to get what? 20%. Now in this compound E, we are having only 20% of phosphorus in calcium phosphate. So that was the, the last one. If you find this video to be useful, share it also to your friends. And also remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching.